Thanks for joining us. This is Agenda Awani. My name is Ibrahim Sani. We continue our cover- coverage on uh, learning, training, development and the issues related uh, around it. Uh, joining me in the studio are two very interesting individuals that we really need to pick their brains on. On my right is Roni Ambrose Gobili, the Chief Strategy and Programs Officer of HRD Corp. And to his right is Shukri Sudari, the Group Chief People Officer of Afin Bank. Maybe, Roni, you can... Uh, start off with uh, exploring the idea of uh, HR D uh, Corp talking about uh, the HR 5.0. Uh, maybe the, to the many of us we are unfamiliar with the idea. Uh, maybe you can share with us what HR 5.0 is all about and why is HRD Corp talking about this often? Thank you, thank you, Ibrahim. So basically, for the past two years, uh, one particular lesson that we have learned is that we need to be agile and ever ready to change. The pandemic, if one thing it has brought to us is that we, we, need to be, we need to go out from where we were before, our comfort zone. We need to move from the traditional way of doing how the HR fraternity has been doing their practices, moving forward to adopt new technology and what's not. So the human resource or HR 5.0 is basically meant to instill the, the culture of adopting digitalization in human resource practices within Malaysian companies and, and, and so forth. So hence, the, the, the philosophy behind this conference that we're going to organize uh, in the very near future is basically to bring all aspects of discussion pertaining to the changes that the HR fraternity needs to put in place should we intend to move forward and develop the, com- uh, the, the companies as a whole. Is this the National Human Capital Conference uh, and uh, Exhibition? Uh, yes, exactly. Okay, uh, based on, maybe uh, Shuki can chime in uh, on this one, um, based on the past experience of the uh, National Human Capital Conference and Exhibition or NHCCE 2022, maybe you can share with us some of the learnings then and perhaps explore what would be some of the ideas that you're going to be speaking of in this upcoming NHCCE uh, exhibition uh, in the Northern Region this May. Thank you, Ibrahim. Um, first, I think the first remark I would like to make about the conference that we had last year is a wow factor, in, in fact. Mm. Why I say that? I think this is the, um, um, in fact, uh, HRD Corp has really redefined the way that um, they organize in terms of um, human resource kind of uh, conference I- in Malaysia in that sense. Looking at the topic, looking at the relevancy, people and organization, is really surpassed the international standard. Um, to me personally, um, last year, uh, when I moderated the session, is more on t- in, t- in terms of embracing the transformation, transformative learning. We're talking about because, as uh, Ronnie mentioned just now, changes is, is the only thing that is constant in that sense. So, as a leader, how we want to make sure that we're able to transform the organization by looking at the uh, innovative solution, for example. For example, how do we uh, really uh, make sure that in terms of learning and training, you know, we can train, train people anywhere, anytime, and any devices in that sense. So I think that's a key message that we um, really share with the participants last year. Uh, from the feedback, I think they were really enjoying the, the, the session last year. And this year, in fact, is going to be expanded as what we did last year. Because as I mentioned just now, transformation changes is something that's uh, uh, imminent, in fact. If we're doing, um, you know, doing uh, the IT transformation, and uh, using the technology in terms of agility is something that we need to pursue. Otherwise, perhaps in the past, it's, beca- it's a competitive advantage, but now it's a necessity. If you don't have that, so it's very difficult for us to survive as a company, as an organization. How do we marry these two ideas of HR 5.0 versus the conference that is being done? Maybe, Ron, you can explore on that idea of whether or not HR 5.0 was effectively discussed in NHCCE 2022 and how it's going to be done for this year. Yeah, sure. Um, but before I... Uh, uh, p- uh, focus on the question. Uh, allow me to chip in a little bit from what uh, Shukri have mentioned. The needs to have a different perspective of human capital development is necessary at this moment. Uh, in fact, if we look at uh, Robert Robert Walters' uh, survey uh, research into for 2023, uh, it has been it has been cited that 60 percent of the companies or employers will be facing challenges to even retain their top talent, while another 95 percent is uh, will be facing issues about where to source for good talents. So if they don't embark into technology, if they don't embark into the new approach of human capital development, these challenges will be the main obstacle for businesses to move forward, mm. right? So hence, this is among the, 
the value add information that we would like to bring to the table during the conference and it will be discussed widely during the conference because uh, uh, all, uh, all speakers that will be invited are experts and practitioners in their own field. So that's where uh, the value of this conference, especially the year 2023 moving forward that we are going to bring in to the table. Let me, let me add a bit on that, Ibrahim uh, and Ronnie. Um, we're talking about technology. The key component important is the skill, how we want to develop our talent. And a lot of participants in CHROs, uh, CPOs of the organization, I give you an example. Uh, some of the skill set that we're going to require five years from now, we don't have it today. Some job is not never exist today. So this is a session whereby we can preempt our practitioners or leaders that how we want to get prepared for the future. Because we don't want to be caught by surprises five years later, suddenly we don't have this kind of skill set. Skill set. Of course, mm. they are not in existence for now, but we have to preempt and we have to develop our people. The element of developing people, um, when I was speaking to some of your colleagues um, uh, in the previous interviews, um, they were talking about developing lifelong learning as a culture. Um, and while that could be the idea of, say, HR directors and many more, uh, maybe Shukri can explore that whole idea of how do you think NHCCE can be used as a platform for us to reorientate or recalibrate uh, the uh, business leaders and HR directors of all kinds and shapes of all sizes of all industries to see the importance and the need for this whole lifelong learning idea uh, and maybe see what can be discussed further in these kind of conferences. I think first, um, the participant is coming from the world, so I have, I work from life in a mm, sense. Mm. Um, the presenters, um, you know, the presenters, um, multiple people as well. We have the uh, business leaders, we have the um, uh, practitioners, the, the practitioners that have all the experience. Um, they have all the experience in looking at this. So I think by attending this program, first definitely there will be a lot of best practices sharing. Um, you know, I think easily we can get you know, we can within two days we can get experience of more than 20, 30 years of experience. People sharing and during the session, I think that's really meaningful because why we don't want to repeat the same mistake that people have made in the past. So by having that session, people are going to share how they maneuver, how they manage some of the challenges in the past. So then it will be quick for people to really learn and you know will excel in whatever they want to do in developing the talent. Uh, maybe you can explore a bit more about the mistakes or the challenges that were the missteps that were taken in the past before uh, we jump to the next conversation with Ronnie. Yeah, f uh, one, one example, you know, um, when we prepared on certainty on transformation, we thought we had to prepare all the plans A to Z before we proceed. Ah. Now the world is not working in, in, in the way anymore. We have to be agile. We improve as we implement the thing, for example. So I think that's one of the, um, the mistakes that in the past, people thought we need to have perfect planning before we implement. Now, the rule is no longer uh, applicable because we have to make sure that we have the objective and then how agile we want to implement uh, this, uh, a certain project. And another one, the last one in terms, in terms of prepared for the future and the future skill. Now, perhaps the skill set is not required, but two years down the line, the skill set is important. So that's why we have to prepare our people in that sense. Ronnie, maybe you can share with us why this year you, got, uh, you are doing uh, a regional NHCCE or the National Human Capital Conference and uh, Exhibition as opposed to how it was done previously. What would be some of the areas of focus within these regional uh, conferences that you think is important for us to look at? Sure. So based on what we, the success, the success that we have achieved last year from the conference, we, we learned that each region might have their own economic challenges and different approaches to suit those challenges. So that's why this year onwards, we, we, we will go nearer to the regions. We are going to the northern regions, uh, southern region, as well as Borneo side uh, to bring this conference nearer to them before uh, organizing the flagship in, in Klang Valley, uh, uh, the fourth one, the main one. So. We understand that each region will have their own approaches to human capital development. They have their own economic planning. And the best, the best way how an economic plan can be executed is by having the right people that execute those plans. But what kind of people, what kind of talent, what sort of approaches that these states or this region going to approach, uh, those are the unique discussion within those regions itself. So that's hence, this, the, the, the current approach for this conference is that we would like to make it localized before we have the national level 
uh, at the end of it. So uh, it's uh, these regional conferences and it will lead up to the national conference. Exactly. Uh, do you feel that this kind of uh, approach would bring the, the, the event, because of the event bringing closer to the people, mm -hmm. there could be a lot more access to the people attending these kind of conferences? Exactly. Um, it is undeniable that timing plays a significant role. Mm. If you only have one event, for example, in a year, mm. um, that might not be suitable for everybody's schedule. Mm. So that's why... Having, by having this, like for example, in Northern, we're having it in Penang, and Southern, we have it in Johor, and for Borneo region, we have it in Sarawak, for mm. example. Uh, then all these, uh, fraternity, uh, these, these uh, societies would be able to access to this event before coming to the main one. And each of these regions will have its own content, tailored, suitable for their uh, requirement and their needs. That's my follow-up question, Shukri, yep. because some of these conferences if you go to the northern region, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, you, there would be more manufacturing uh, requirements uh, there. If you go to central, maybe services. If you go southern, different. Borneo, different. Do you feel that that kind of uh, requirements are different and therefore it cannot be uniformed across these regions? What do you think? From my personal um, kind of experience, um, you know, the industry can be different. Mm. But the skill set, it can be um, uniform, uniform in, in that sense. i give an example. For example, we're talking about future skill. Uh, we're talking about how we want to have our people in terms of ethical skill. Mm. No, it's across, it's universal, it's across the industry. Yeah, doesn't yeah. matter doesn't where matter you are, where big, small, yeah. old, young. Yeah. And then the biggest thing is that, is that how we want to change our people mindset. So it's, in, in, it's general as well, skill set that's important for everyone and everywhere in that sense. Mm. And again, I think I want to add a bit in terms of um, you know, why we're having the region. I think HRDCOM has done a good job last year in having a national conference. We want to share the good thing to the uh, um, other places as well in Malaysia because I think it's a good opportunity for people to be exposed in what we have done in the, uh, in the central in that sense. Right? online or blended uh, do you feel that that still has a place uh, now that we're still doing face to face um, where do you feel these kind of conferences moving forward in terms of delivery face to face blended or online so the the, the face to face or online is merely a mode of delivery a message it's either conference or training and what's not it's a mode of options that we now have uh, compared to before, and uh, this has been escalated by the pandemic anyway. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. as as uh, option, as far as option is concerned, it is most welcome, mm -hmm. right? And of course, being uh, 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 human, human is uh, we are you know we, we love to interact with each other. So those group of people they can come to face to face, uh, while those who might be far distance and what's not. This is where the options for online may take may may may, may be in, uh, important for them. So either way, uh, as far as uh, delivery of messages is concerned, either this conference or any other training under HRD Corp, for example, we do allow the the, the blend of both, face-to-face, uh, -face, online, even remote online is is allowed uh, for the moment. However, Rahim, I think after two years, you know, you know, pandemic, I think a lot of people already tired having online. I think um, when we open up for the face-to-face, -face, we have a lot of uh, kind of uh, participation because. People want to network, starting network. So after two, just imagine. I think you also perhaps have the same experience as well, facing the uh, just monitor and laptop. So I think um, nowadays people love because they're very excited to meet people and networking. You know, it, my, my nine-year-old is now using specs because she started school yeah. at seven. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, you're right. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know whether kids these days are going to be tired of yeah. online because that's the only thing they know of. But folks like us, yeah. Yeah. And and during the during the uh, call it the uh, the conference. It's not only listening to the panel is important. Networking is equally important. Why? Because that's where we meet our colleague that perhaps having the same problem and challenges. Mm. And then perhaps someone has uh, managed to overcome that. So sharing, you know, kind of thing. And then after that, they will continue from that. So I think that's a good uh, uh, venue for us to create and, you know, starting the new network that we've among the colleagues. Uh, just, just to add a little bit on that, particularly zooming into our conferences. Yes. Uh, last year's we had a, a very overwhelming response. Uh, we didn't expect the numbers to, to reach to almost 2,500 participants. Like what... Uh, uh, that wasn't the... You didn't expect that Yes, kind of beyond process. our expectation, like what Shukri was mentioning. People, uh, they, they, they are so... 
so looking forward to, to, to meet each other and to interact, especially when it comes to human capital development. Uh, human capital development, you really need to be human in order for you to actually, <laughs> you know, communicate with each uh, other. Microsoft Teams development, no. It, it, ju it just doesn't work with uh, on screen, right? So, yes, last year was a great success. We had 2,500 participants and we, are, we look forward for the same trend to happen this year. Mm. Okay, uh, delivery method aside, um, now we need to focus on the content of the conferences. Sure. Uh, maybe you can share with us the nuances of these kind of conferences, not, not just about the national level, but the regional. We'll start off with Northern Region, for instance. How do you structure the programs? Why is it the, uh, how can you bring value to those attendees? Maybe either one of you can take this question. So maybe I just start the, the, the discussion yeah, please, loading, yeah, for example. Yeah, yeah. Now, when we, when we talk at HR 5.0, the, the key theme will be about areas like, for example, the future of work. Right? And another one is on the innovation of the workplace. Now, this theme could be the same, but different approach and application in different regions, yeah. for example. Like what, what you rightfully put it, maybe in the northern region, the industry is focusing more on manufacturing. Yeah. So how do they deal with this kind of uh, theme in their given scenario? Mm. That, so the discussion, uh, I would love to, 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 to refer back to our last year's uh, uh, conference where we brought in 30 speakers specialized in their respective area. For example, we have Charles Brewer, the group CEO of Post Malaysia, for example. He was talking about the dynamic in the, the courier, industry, courier, uh, courier industry, where he is in. So similarly in Northern region, maybe perhaps this year, we will be bringing in the same quality of speakers who have the heart and experience of the industry and the economy that is happening within that region to talk about this topic particularly and when it comes to the northern uh, also southern then it will be a different scenario but for the same uh, theme or topics yeah uh, um the, the the topic is basically is universal as i mentioned just now i give you another example um i think everyone knows uh, to use excel today right um, but um, in five years this is my own prediction in my humble opinion is that if you don't know how to configure board is now like we are handicapped is we yeah. don't know excel five yeah. years now right so it's a universal kind of skill set but that how we want to cascade information to our hr practitioners in in northern and southern then they can plan start planning now people are talking about chat gpt right a lot of people have been using it you know so but then if people don't be exposed in this kind of topic how do you want to start so at least um let them aware then easy for them to check and look and then for us to for them to implement in that sense actually you touched on a very interesting point because um, automation of uh, query prompt uh, ai solutioning is also very key um, artificial solutioning is also very important for companies to look at uh, on the surface yeah this these are kind of the new solutions that companies need to grapple with but at the bottom of it is still the same idea which is trying to bring best customer experience for their respective clients right how do you marry these two kind of uh, uh, challenges? A novel solutioning like ChatGPT versus the very basic primary point of customer service. Do you feel that these kind of ideas are going to be discussed at these kind of conferences, NHCC? Definitely it will because whether we like it or not, we can't run away from the, uh, the evolvement of technology. Yeah. ChatGPT or whatever that's going to be called in the future is just a product of AI. Yeah. AI technology itself will be expanding. It will be getting much more mature than we, where we are today, right? Even the chat GPT, there are two schools of thought. Is it something that we should be embracing because it's going to give a threat to us being the human and we will be losing our job to AI, for example, that is one school of thought. The other school of thought is, that, hey, why don't we leverage on AI? We upskill ourselves so that we will be able to manage this technology to our advantages. Right. What would, would, would HR directors, people like yourselves, be familiar with these kind of uh, uh, requirements where you need, to, you need to win this game or else you're going to lose out? Not just the, the department itself, but the organization itself. How far do you think the gap is when it comes to HR directors grappling with technology and the need to train your people for uh, understanding this kind of technology? So that's why this kind of conference is important and key. Because why, as I mentioned, the first step is awareness. The moment that you're aware of the technology, start using it, then you know what is the benefit. Um, 
For example, mm. ChatGPT, as you mentioned just now, is quite new. I have been using it. A lot of my yeah. colleagues have been using it. Yeah. And then we have another problem now. We have security issues. How do we manage that? that Absolutely. Kind of so unless we use the technology, we understand you know, the behavior of the technology, only then we can roll out into the organization. Because at the end of the day, customer matters. Mm -hmm. Whatever that we're doing, we want to improve the efficiency. We want to have the better customer experience. At the end of the day, it's going to make our customer happy in that sense. So all of this will be, you know, there will be sharing in terms of how you manage this topic. And from the captain of the industries, from the professional, they have done it before. So why we want to make the same mistake where they can share and we, you know, we benefit from that. What would be some of your advice when it comes to people who are interested in uh, attending these kind of conferences? Maybe either of you can take it or both of you can take it. Particularly uh, when it comes to the NHCCE 2023, either regional or eventually culminating to the national level. They're already watching us in this conversation. They want to be a part of it. How do they get involved? How do they attend? And so on. Okay, most of the, all the information will be made available in our website. Uh, kindly go to www.hrdcorp.gov.my for the uh, most recent announcement or information pertaining to the event. Mm -hmm. So that will be the uh, basic platform for them to acquire information uh, on, 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 even, on events such as like this organized by HRD Corp. Um, to me, the first step that, you know, stop thinking, right? You have been thinking too much. Overthinking, Register, yeah. Overthinking. I know, yeah. I know this is paralysis, you know. I can rest, rest assured that this program is going to benefit, you're going to benefit it because a lot of interesting uh, stories uh, share best experience will be shared. So the first step is that go to the website, whatsoever, contact HRD Corp, register immediately. Second, basically, please come with an open mind. Um, be prepared to learn, unlearn and relearn because there are a lot of new things that you're going yeah, to. Actually, yeah. you touched on a very important point. Skepticism is high yeah. when it comes to these kind of trainings. Uh, do you feel that that is the challenge? Eventually, that is the, ultimately people must come with an open mind or else this skepticism is just going to inhibit or, or prohibit the, the oneself of growing further. What do you think? Yeah, to me, there are three types of people when it comes to any training whatsoever. The first one, they say perhaps this one is crap, not good whatsoever. Yeah. So, leave it. Right? Yeah. The second part is that that's a good idea, Ibrahim. You know, I want to do it one day, but one day never, never happen in the life. You just stop there. The third group of people saying that this is fantastic, Brian, good idea. I want to do it now. Even I want to start, start small, but you see that this guy, the person that said I want to start small now, will be reaching at the end of the uh, racing, racing line. Don't yeah. start, so we'll see, yeah. we'll see them on the top. So there are a lot of people that having this kind of group, but you know, it's 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 matter of choice. You choose whatever you want to your your destiny in that sense. And if I read the signal last year correctly, the two thousand five hundred participants they might have uh, moved forward from the, the, the negative thinking or, or short-minded scenario that they used to be to, some, to some, somebody who eagers to learn more. How can they actually prove, future-proof themselves? We, we can see from the participation of the event, they, have, they are keen to, to ask for more and acquire more information. Uh, so the NACCE Northern Region is happening on the 31st of May. And uh, again, uh, just to repeat, uh, the website is? Uh, www.hrdcorp.gov.my There you go, fantastic. Final word before we conclude our conversation. Um, I, I, I definitely would like to see all of you there. Rest assured, it will be interesting. I'll be there um, hosting one of the sessions. Definitely I'm going to do the best sharing, the, the sharing that I have used to share before. So see you guys there. Ronnie? Okay. Um, well, uh, a short information for me. The future is here today. And if we don't uh, back up ourselves, we will be left and we won't be able to move forward. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for having this very brilliant conversation. That was Ronnie Ambrose Gobili, the Chief Strategy and Programs Officer at HRD Corp. And earlier on, you just heard from Shukri Sudari, the Group Chief People Officer at Afin Bank. You can learn more about this on their website. Also, on astroawani.com, you have been watching Agenda Awani. My name is Ibrahim Sani. Catch you in the next one.